Run the rhythm track, Major Macro, Luciano, Mighty General, original Saxon studio from back in England. Oh gosh, look how far we are come from. Well, what you know? Follow me now. I am here vibing one of the first non Jamaican dancehall superstars. His parents named him Dominic Kenny, and today he shares his story. We teach them. Dominic, <laughs> all is well, sir? Of course. The white veteran. Back in Jamaica. <laughs> back in Jamaica. Yeah. It's good for city man. It's good to be back in Jamaica. Nice man, nice yeah. man. Really is. Who said I'm Nick? Who said I'm Nick? Favor boy, Ja Ja. Who said I'm Nick? Who said I'm Nick? Favor boy, come on. Who said I'm Nick? Who said I'm Nick? Favor boy, Ja Ja. Who said I'm Nick? Who said I'm Nick? Favor boy, no. Look how me neat. Look how me slick, me no. Man, but him, me no. Big ass, eighties, eighties, me no one can't keep me no in a slackness, cause I. Put it up, put it up. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! If it's a roller coaster, ups and downs, and you take the good with the bad, and when you reach a certain level, you have to really give thanks for life. You know? Yeah, man, yeah, man. Everything. Talk to us, though, Father Dominic. Early life, place of birth. Well, I was born in West London, uh, St Stephen's Hospital on the Fulham Road. Uh, it's now called Chelsea and Westminster Hospital. I grew up in Notting Hill area of London. Uh, got involved in... Notting Hill area? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So when I grew up in Notting Hill, Carnival, Carnival used to... Mad! I, rem I remember the 1976 <laughs> riot and uh, all what was going on. It was, in all honesty, it was, it was a response to overzealous racist police tactics. Mm. And I was there as a young youth. It wasn't no race war between black or white. It was between the oppressed and the oppressor. Pressers. And, you know, the carnival has now changed into more of a money-making event. Mm. I tried to perform there. All the times that you haven't seen me in Jamaica, I go to Saxon Studio Sound and we get on the mic. Great Saxon. You know, yep. myself and whoever happens to be in England right at the, the time. time. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Schooling. I went to uh, Oxford Gardens Primary School, which was the same school as Brinsley Ford from Aswad, mm. and I believe uh, Drummy Angus, who we lost recently. Oh, okay. And um, I then went to Maribyrn Grammar School, and uh, one of my school friends, he was in the year above me, was the famous Jamaican-born English team footballer, John Barnes. John, Johnny. And along with uh, John Taylor, who went on to build what's known as the Reggae Philharmonic Orchestra. He's a oh. very brilliant violinist, you know? Cool, cool, cool. So the connection is Yeah, from, er, from early. From before, because my father is an artist and he studied at the Slade School. When I say artist, I mean... His sculpture. He cause, used to, okay, you know, sculpting. He used sculpture. And I found out that his teacher was none other than Edna Manley. Who the, is the great mother. Edna Manley. Absolutely. So... <laughs> It's a whole like, leap of yeah, intertwining it's, it's, and things yeah. from early weather. Yeah, so although I'm not a born Jamaican, I feel Jamaica is very much part of my soul. So it's very good to be back here. Yes, man. Because that was what? We would then call it what, like high school that? Yeah, well, it was grammar school. Uh, we were the last grammar school in England because uh, the government changed the school system and said that every school had to turn comprehensive. And my school wanted to stay as a grammar school. Mm. Uh, very much the same curriculum that a lot of the children in the good schools, most of the schools actually, within Jamaica, very much concerned about grammar, punctuation, academic achievements, mathematics, algebra, mm. Shakespeare, okay. learn, you know, good solid learning mm. that has since been replaced with the internet and people use Grammarly and things like that. Yes. So, it was a good background, you know, yes. to tell the truth. Jamaicans on a whole and people in the music know Dominic as, you know, people say the first white boy DJ, but we soon clear up that and clarify <laughs> that because that is not the case, Zane. Yeah. But how did you get involved with Jamaican music back then, though? Well, after school, I, well, even at school, I was writing for magazines like Zigzag, New Black Music. Echo. Yeah, New Musical Express, mm, and I, mean. I wrote about several 
reggae groups as such, like Aswed. And then when the dance all era come in with Yellow Man and Eka Mouse mm. and all of that, I absorbed that a thousand percent and I went out of my way to interview all of the artists. Some of them didn't even have records out. Mm. When I interviewed Super Cat, he hadn't even made a record. Oh, okay. The same with Papa San. Oh, no, he had made a record, but it was before books mm. and Cry for the Youth and all of that. Oh, okay, but even so, even before you started writing for Zigzag and Black Echo and Enemy, what led you down that road as quote unquote a white man wanting you now to document reggae music? Because it was on my doorstep. I okay. mean, like, uh, believe it or not, I didn't know that's who he was at the time, but we would see Claudie Massa on Portobello Road. Oh, yeah? Bob Marley used to live in the area. Uh, Bob Andy lived in Great Notting Bob Hill Andy. till he passed away. So that was on our doorstep. Mm. You know, the Sons of Ja, Aswad. The sons of Ja. You know, all of these people were very much important in part of my upbringing, mm. you know, as, much, as, as any of the youths in the area. You know what I mean? It wasn't a black or white thing, you know? It was just, this is where we're from. Unfortunately, that culture has been exploited and turned into money for the real estate development and the gentrification, and Notting Hill has suffered similar to Brixton, mm. where it's almost been homogenized by the developers and investors from China and places mm. like that. Yeah. So from early on, you were immersed in the music and started to develop a love for it. Yes. So much so that you started to write about the music. Well, I started the writing about the music because I didn't really have the confidence to feel that I was good enough to be an artist. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> I went to Jamaica and Billy Boy and Little John. Well, even before you read Jamaica, okay. you kind of you kind of rush your teeth Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. What led you to come into Jamaica, though? What 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 gave me? Why? It's because you were searching for people to interview, or you just wanted to come and see the thing for yourself. If I'm being really honest, I was at a stage in my life which I think anyone between the ages of 15 to 18 can understand. I was searching not so much for an identity, but I was very much in a sense of. Uh, I was in a sense of I was getting in trouble and I needed to reinvent my lifestyle. Oh, and yeah. so going, my mother suggested you should go to Jamaica. Oh yeah? And other people in the community say, going to Jamaica? But obviously Jamaica was, and I hold this dear, closest to my heart, made me make something in my life. So mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for that still. You know? So you came to Jamaica with the intention to do journalistic work or to pursue the music initially? Not really. I mean, the musical thing developed because uh, Billy Boyo and Little John and Barrington Levy encouraged it. I used mm. to DJ on Romantic. So, so hold on now, so I could, I could get this. You came here for the first time, 1983. Yeah. And the first song, because many people out there have it that from your Japa Jamaica and Metro Media and Metro Yede. The right. first let song me, you let, have... let me clarify yes. this. Yes. I DJed on Romantic and Soul Imperial before Metro Media, but at that stage of the game, it was very much, I was still a journalist. Okay, okay. It was Metro Media that, that I actually, right, this is it, I'm gonna do this all right. professionally so, so. and all the way. Nice, so that. initially, Soul Imperial With and Super, Romantic yeah. Ipo, who was on Soul Imperial? Uh, Supercat, did DJ on Soul Imperial, Early B, Jim Brown, who changed his name to Gymnastic, Junior Cat, Marlon Brando, lots of artists. It was mm. a starting ground, yes. you know? And so, but at the same time, I, I was interviewing artists. Okay. And then I came back to England and I thought, you know, I'm going to try this. So I was interviewing Saxon and then they invited me to some dances okay. and I start DJ on Saxon a little bit. And Peter Metro. I don't think he see me DJ, it was a dance in Nottingham. It wasn't the Brixton Academy. It wasn't Brixton he's... Academy. No, I was at that dance, but he see me in Nottingham DJ or right. oh, Northampton with Saxon. And he was there with Sister Verna and Josie and all that, because Metro Media was meant to play there, but they okay. didn't play. And he see me and he said, like, you can DJ. Come check me when you come to Jamaica. So fast forward to 86, yes. April 86, when I arrived in Jamaica, I went to see George Pang right. and obviously Peter Metro. Right. Hold it right there, sir. Because some only things I want to bring out of that. I'm going to go back to Romantic High Power yeah. and Imperial. So, Imperial, 
then romantic eye power that yeah. was little john and tyan and it was little john squidly bam daddy life super black uh, El Figa Barker, Barker, all those mm. artists there, yeah. And that was the first song you actually, actually DJ'd, DJ'd on. DJ'd on, yeah, yeah. And it was, what, was a novelty thing for you, like? Uh, to be honest with you, that's more or less what it was. It was like a bit of fun, a little joke. I didn't take it too seriously. When I get back to England, I never really tell anybody. And then I realised that actually you develop your talent. And so when Peter Metro see me in Northampton, mm -hmm. when he was there with Metro Media, and then I see him at the academy and he's like, you come to Forward. Jamaica, come and check me. You yes. know what I mean? So, I mean, obviously on a professional level and actually becoming the artist Metro that I am, media. it was Metro Media that really I cut my teeth on, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, man. You know? All right. Hold it right this a little bit now. Whilst you were in Jamaica in the first stint, was it a situation where Junja actually gave you an opening slot, a warm-up slot and Volcano? No, not so much on Volcano, but what happened in Volcano was they used to practice every day in a small room on the corner of Myrie Lane and oh, Spanish yeah? Town Road. So I used to DJ there sometimes. Oh. But, I mean, I wasn't really ready just then, mm. you know what I mean? It was just the sheer novelty of seeing someone yes. white DJing. And then I thought, no, if you develop this, this can work out. And so... Barrington Levy and the folks wanted you to sing. That's right, but my voice was flat like the road. <laughs> yeah. So you try to have a DJ thing? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah Then yeah. you went back to England now, so you came first 83, went back when? 80... Went back 84, 84. came back 84, went back to England. Oh, so you, you, you went back 84 and come back 84? Yeah. Oh, but you've been in and out from early, yeah, man. Yeah, so I get in some trouble. I was framed by the police in England and uh, I ended up spending some time in, in jail, in custody. And when I was in jail, we had a cassette of Saxon. And Papa Levi's like, no worry yourself, Dominic. When you finish your apprentice trip, you can, you, you, you'll Circle. be able to Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to make something of my life. Mm. And I come out with that determination. George Pan come to visit me. And... Uh, While it's in prison? Yeah, you know, so... Also, you knew George from your time here? Yeah, of oh, course, okay. yeah, you know, it's, and... Um, the police that were involved in that, that matter have since been exposed as being corrupt and part of the Stephen Lawrence scandal where Stephen Lawrence's murder inquiry was not solved because the police did not investigate because they were receiving money. Are you able to say what were you framed for? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, was, I was accused of breaking and entering. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so. How, how long was there? The time that you served? I got 12 months. In 12 jail. months? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whilst in jail now, you started to develop a conviction that music is the way forward? Well, you know, you have a, a moment of clarity, as they call it, you know? Mm. So I'm sitting there, the journalist thing ain't really working, and I'm like, I didn't even do nothing to be here. And I'm like, you're here because you mix with the wrong people, and you first start out your life. And so everything happens for a reason, and when to Jamaica and got involved in the music. Before I went back to Jamaica, right. I recorded a track with John and Gussie from Dub Render, and they gave me the tape and I gave it to George and he put it out on the Powerhouse label. Which song was that? That was called Computer Trim. Computer Trim. Mm. So Computer Trim was your first Very official first. recording? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then after that came Cockney and Yardy. Right, that with Metro. With Metro, which was basically, and I'll say it out of my own mouth, it came off the style of Smiley Culture's Cockney Translator. Mm. It's not a direct copy, but each one teach one and you can have your... You take a melody and, 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 and sing yeah. it, man, and yeah. them good things there. So we did that and that was a big success. Well done, Dominic, man! Oh, what, been made sweet as a nut, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, so the one old brain gonna freeze out. Yeah, it's brass monkeys over there, mate. Why are you worried so blessed, like, Dominic? Watch out! Tell him! Listen to Yardy, listen to Cockney, listen to Blackie, listen to Whitey, listen to Yardy, listen to Cockney, listen to Dominican, Metro Peter, but why is along with some Jamaican but in England them talking a different fashion. No, listen to Dominic as the true white man, listen to Dominic with the English twang. Oh, right, mate, 
this way is not with a situation Well, it's a beat of Metro, yes, you know you are done You come up on the mic and you come talk long Well, it's a people here, you just tell one Man, the first time me take a plane go to England Me say, who should be done that a true white man When them talk to Peter Metro, me not understand A peer cop, me, me think a twang, them a twang Mickey Mouse That a house Boat race That a your face Ten to two That a your show The heat up That a your shirt Witness face That a your hair Oh gosh, pull it up again Yo, people, I don't really feel no way But it's been about 30 years since I taught that lyric there And then came Boy George Boy, hold on man, when I when left England yeah. <laughs> Saxon Yeah Because when you went back to England Saxon was before or after serving time? Saxon was before and after. Before and after. Yeah. And, and, and Saxon at the time, we had people like Tipper Airy. Yeah, Sandy Tipper Airy, Rusty. Daddy Sandy, Rusty, uh, Colonel, Simeon was coming up at that time, Roger Robin, uh, Dennis Rowe, Mosselhead. Mm, Mosselhead, ah, yeah, 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 Saps, yeah, Dennis you know. Rowe. Yeah. And you actually went on the road with Saxon. We used to travel time. up and down England doing dances all over the place. Every weekend we're up and down that moment. So were you a DJ on Saxon or probably you started out as a box boy into the DJ? Oh, 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 oh how that go? I, I started out as a DJ, as but a obviously... DJ. Yeah, we used to, Yeah, we had to do our thing. And I'd come to Jamaica and I'd get tunes from uh, people like that other people couldn't get. For Saxon? Yeah, for oh, Saxon. So you yeah, cut... No, I wasn't cutting dub, but like oh, at that time a man, a, man, a, a man would have a tape and he would give it to you and say, boy, may I try to look something after this, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. And then take it from there, you know? You came back officially 86. Yeah. So you came back and you linked with George Bang when you came back? Yeah, I linked with George and uh, put out computer trim on Powerhouse. I originally recorded Boy George for George Pang. And I then turned around, I didn't like the rhythm, and I then re recorded it for Jammies. Uh -huh. And I went to so, see George. George Vex? No, he's not. George is a gentleman. Oh, George is a gentleman. Yeah. I went to see him, and I said, George, I don't like the rhythm, and I'm voicing, I voiced it for someone else. Mm. And he's like, well, you do what you feel is the right thing for do. So, you know, and that utmost was the right respect thing to, to Pepper for that. Done an LP for him. Of George Pang and Jammies? George Pang and Jammies both have LPs with Dominic. Oh, yeah? Were released, yeah. You know what I mean? But I'll be honest with you, I think those two albums should have been compacted or edited into one album because mm. a lot of the material, like, in hindsight, it was the novelty factor mm. of being white. Rushed? To some extent, yeah. You know, but there's certain tunes that stand the test of time, as you hear to this day. They still play year in Jamaica on the radio. Boy George, obviously, because of the status and of NFA. Yardy and Cockney and stuff. Cockney and Yardy, you know what I mean? And there's tunes I've done since then, which we will get on to. Right. Still. What is the name of the LP that you did for, for, for Jamies? Uh, Ready for Dominic. Ready for Dominic. Yeah. And for, for George? Just called Dominic. Just called Dominic. Yeah. Mm. So now you were back in Jamaica. You then started living in Arnett Gardens. Yes, I uh, took the initiative to live in one of the most volatile parts of Jamaica and I have no regrets whatsoever. No regrets? No, not at all. No money, no more money, but we have the best for Watch it up, mix it. What the Buddha say I went and call out my name? Come, call out my name, yeah, call out my name. What the Buddha say I went and call out my name now? Call out my name, call out my name. Send me insane, sniff cocaine. Live in a board house down Luke Lane. Send me my shop to win a winner gold chain. But them things really not got pressure my brain. No matter what them say, I'll come talk next. Now get me mad, now go get me vexed. Could send me and the donkeys don't have sex. But over the years I've had success. What them would I say when them call out my name? Come, call out my name, yeah, call out my name. What them would I say when them call out my name? Mix. Call out my name, call out my name As a white man DJ, I am a sample Don't expect me to say good example That like live uptown, drive rental But me not like uptown, me prefer jungle What a Buddha Ah, uh, because George, you're G, you're good, you're safe Nobody not have trouble here Yeah, but why well, if someone have something with George? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah know. And, and there was never a time that you were fearful or you had any bad experience while living in, in Arnett? 
Yeah, I had a little bit of a bad experience. It was a misunderstanding. I went to DJ for some people in Tivoli Gardens. I had a relationship with a, a girlfriend down there. And a lot of people felt that I was... The switch. Yeah, I was getting a bit too close with the other side, so to speak. I stood my ground. I carried on doing what I did. Uh, and some people were saying, oh, Dominic got run out of jungle. But I never get run out of jungle once. You yeah. Know what I mean? And I go back to the community. I go there regular basis, same way. And any junglist will say, tell you, and anyone from Arnott Garden will say, it's a complicated community. Mm. It's the biggest housing scheme in Jamaica. Not everyone is going to get along. And there's all sorts of frictions that seem to uprise and all yes. that. Yeah. We have mentioned George Pang name a few times, but he used to hang with some <laughs> with some of the people that were with, with 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 reputation where precede them. Um, Zeke's Matthews Lane. Yeah. Jim Brown. Yeah. Tiffany. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Early bird. Mm-hmm. What are them on there? Willie Agat. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've been at them circles and about it, man. As a as a as a as a man when I come from that side, yeah, man. Yeah. I, I, I saw I a also... heavy crowd. I said, I read that. Yeah, but me have my dignity with friend them, you know. Yeah, Tom Tavares, Finson, <laughs> Bobsy Green. Yeah, you know. They have so, a balance, I think. Yeah, I mean, what you have to understand is and overstand is that basically, just because someone necessarily might be deemed as having a terrible bad reputation, that some of their principles and their ways are better than some people that. To possibly good to be citizens. The, yeah, you know, and uh, I'm not really going to go into details, obviously. On yeah, man, 100%, man. I can understand but, that, man, 100%. You know, the people that you mentioned yeah. treat me good. Yeah. Cool. As a matter of fact, one of the time when you were around, <laughs> Zeke, I think that is the time when they must say, uh, was that the time? Or it was Jim Brown. When say, you did a song about the switch. Uh, switch the, what's the name of that song? About what? Well, them say me switch. Well, yeah, say a switch. That, you see a white man, you have to take side on and then sit there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how to knock bell or how to right. ring fist. Right, you don't know how to, you know to ring bell or knock fist. fist yeah, what the yeah. song name? Yeah. Well, the song came out called, uh, it was called Equal Rights and Equal Justice. Equal Rights and Justice. <laughs> and I DJ'd that. I recorded that track for myself. Oh. And I put it out on my label in New York. But sometimes self-production, you have to have the right machine, the right connections, the right people to boost the tune. And distributors so, and stuff. You know, but What's the name of your label? It was called Worldwide Peace. Worldwide you know Peace. I mean? And uh, I've had another label since then still, you know, been up to quite a bit. Why what, what, that one name? That was called Ape Man. And the name for that came from a childhood name because I used to give trouble climbing up and down buildings and trees and falling out, bossing my head and all of that. So I decided to revert back to that name and that was the name of the magazine. That oh, I so did. that was your magazine? Yeah. Ape Man again? Yeah. So the label and the magazine. Yeah. Because you had a clothing company at the time, it's big now, called Bathing Ape. Mm. And we run an advert with Bathing Ape. Yeah. And um, it was like, you know, um, the Beastie Boys had their magazine called Grand Royale. Mm. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I used that as kind of a benchmark to how I wanted to put in a lot of retro, a lot of kish, not just reggae music writing about people like Evil Knievel, the stunt rider, uh, done a whole article, whole feature on the Hammond organ, mm -hmm. you know, not just Jackie Mitsu, but... OK, OK. You know, the whole series and that, uh, done a whole thing about the connection between Jamaican culture and Kung Fu films, mm -hmm. you know? Done a whole in-depth feature about the movies of John Woo, made in Hong Kong, you know, the killer for A Better Tomorrow. So we covered a lot of ground with that, and then from that, we did the label, we put out a lot of what would be called cut and paste records. Mm -hmm. So DJs taking different breaks and putting them together like DJ tracks. And uh, a white youth that is a brilliant rapper called Skinny Man. Skinny Man. So I jumped back into the studio with Skinny Man. So you have been producing him? Yeah, we've done some tracks. He went on to do really well, got an LP out. Uh, he's someone I talk to regular, I'm mm -hmm. in contact with him. And I've got some rhythm tracks that I've built since in Jamaica that I plan to maybe try and get Some skinny. artists. Yeah. Oh, skinny and as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, really and truthfully, I, I'm on big L don't clear tune. Oh, I don't right. know, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we'll Errol would get a tune, man. Yeah, he probably would, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So we're just dealing with that. It's The dots are always connected. Right. The writing about music, as you see the illustrations of Sizzler and all of that, and being active 
as a producer or chatting lyrics. Yeah, the, 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 the illustration you're talking about, I saw a few of them just now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely wonderful work, man. He actually went to school for that. Uh, that is just innate. And, and well, my parents were very, very disappointed that I didn't go to art school. I went to Jamaica and uh, sometimes everything happens for a reason. But my belief system was that I can do the art mm. when I'm old. I don't know if I can DJ. <laughs> when you're old. But, I'm 58 now. Hey, you're not all so, yet, man. Yeah, yeah. So, go out with a local team, but you're not all yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we're established. Yes. <laughs> so let's talk about now, can we soon come back around to some of these things? Yes, yeah, cool. Metro Media, okay. that is where... That's really where I got my training ground. I served my apprenticeship. Saxon was good, but obviously going to jail kind of slowed everything up. Coming back out, the actual time where you're sitting down, Peter was the first one to sit down and say, Dominic, this is how you do your lyrics. You can't have a bag of long lyrics like you're writing a book. People just get fed up. <laughs> yeah. You have to have commercial lyrics for the girls. You have to construct it like this. Do your chorus. When you go on a stage show, don't go up and say, yo, big up Harry, big up John. Yo, me a big up Adrian. Yo, you, you see the man who come down from the gully back? We have big them up too. That's like, what DJ. You. you go up, they go, yo, come in, <coughs> fat, and tear it down. Mm. So Metro show me that still. Got enough artists who have great record and hit tunes don't not have the stage Can't presence, perform. especially in hip hop. Mm. The only one that really is like the Peter Metro of hip hop, the year to year, is KRS One. KRS One, yeah. A few bridging them that one. Good friend. Oh, so, yeah. so Corona. So when you were around Metro Media, now who else was there? Oh no, Peter was there. Who else was there? Ashman. Ashman was there. Tonto Metro was there. Um, Dennis, who's I think's passed away now. Danny Dredd. Danny Dredd. A Dr. C came from Negril. Okay. He come and stayed with me in Jungle. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. He was amongst us in Arnott Garden. Um, Dr. C passed as well? Dr. C died, I believe, of HIV-related complications. Uh, but he went through a very tragic experience. His baby mother was killed and raped in the house in Arnott Garden. So, he, so I think that... You were he, staying in as well? I was in New York at the time, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so I don't lose sight of That's stuff like that. Daddy Life was on the sound as well? Yeah, Daddy Life was. Daddy like, Life passed as well? Daddy Life passed away as well. He was yeah. what? Murdered? I don't know. I, I mean, know. I don't want to really like get some sort of stereotypical white supremacist attitude towards if someone dies of it at a young age in mm. Jamaica that it must necessarily be a murder right. because I'm getting sick and tired of this branding you know what I mean what is happening what happened in that school in Kingston Tech Kingston was Tech. absolutely tragic and I go out for both of the parents of both of the children yeah but that happens on a regular basis in Maybe England okay. in London my son's friend was killed in Victoria Station yet people and often Jamaicans are quick to criticise, self-criticism, you know, we have a crime problem, and I can say we, mm. in Jamaica. We do. But the problem, as my son asked me, is there a gun factory in Jamaica? No, there is not. Mm -hmm. So this is an imported problem. People fight all over the world. Yes. You know, why are all these guns in Jamaica? Who put them there? Jamaicans never put all of them there. You know, mm. Jamaica was caught up in an ideological warfare, not through choice. You mean Siaga Manley? Bigger than Siago and Manny, Russia and America. Mm. The superpowers are drawing that, and they do the same thing in South America. Operation Condor, they do that in Bolivia, they do that in um, Colombia, they do it in Peru, you know? And they create this situation where they put poor people against one another. They set up a situation of destabilization. It was well practiced with Salvador Allende in Chile, you know? And this is all something that I researched and learnt about, which is the next part, is about the book that I wrote about Concrete, Concrete jungle. jungle. So I wanted to know why were the people so, people that show me so much love were so angry that I went to Tivoli Gardens to DJ. Mm. And doing the research, I kind of understand now that it's Jamaica, was, Jamaica was on the verge of a civil war. You know, and a lot of stuff is only recently coming out. You know, what is in the dark will come into the light. They have a website called Cover Action. It names the CIA agents that were placed in Jamaica. You know, now I'm not PMP or JLP and I never will be. I support Amen, Jamaica, brother. you know, and I think that 
it makes me very, very angry to see that, you know, that England, they have a part of it, America has a part of it. You know, you brought these people to, from Africa to this Caribbean country and then want them to kill off one another because one has said eh and the other one has said something different, you know, because you're a threat about Castro, you know? How are that? How are that? Yeah. <laughs> Almost a year since we did work for me When me land a girl while be me mother scotra Now me get big and broad as an entertainer Girl, them a rush me like Julius Caesar Massage me back, baby, in spring water Lick a little run, don't bring with liver Every Wednesday night, me there at Metro Media Long with me bridge where you go, Metro Meter Kicking chest, ash bags like you said, selector There's some people out while you come along at Otter Me used to rock it on jammy superpower in a new york on down be type power in a canada on the sound called upsetter people come along and then i watch and i wonder how this little white man have so much to do it's the utter when me come along say that people start stutter grant me nick yo i'm in a play with lyrics but as a dj you have to please the public your lyrics have a storyline and a topic but something so people can relate to it whether Jamaican or whether English Music is part of our heritage The Beatles, the Rolling Stones and Elvis Well let's look back into reggae music Can we pop and hear yeah, us every bit I Roy, big you for talking with it Back to Ron and the party from earlier How many siblings? Just the one you know Yeah? Yeah <laughs> That I know of. That you do yeah, have? Yeah, yeah. Male or female? Male, young male. boy. boy. Okay, yeah. okay, 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 yeah. okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. So now, Metro Media, one of the biggest sound in the space from them time till now, that is where you develop your craft, you learn the trade, and you would have been involved in, in some major moments in the music. So what, like, what, yes, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what was the first, uh, even before Reach Clash, you remember the first Metro Media big dance you go? Go hold the mic. The first time I see Metro Media was at Gemini Club. Mm. They used to play there every Wednesday night. And it was very special to me because it was the last time that Hugh Mundell, Hugh Mundell. ever performed. And he was singing on Metro Media. I interviewed Peter that same night. And before that, it was all Volcano. Mm. The first time I really held the mic on Metro Media was over at Woodford Park, Woodford Park on Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. And that was a calendar event. Every Wednesday, I would be there. And we went all over Jamaica mm. and all over the corporate area, yes. DJing dances and experiencing many different things. Yes. You know, it was it was. You remember good. the first class you were involved in on Metro? Uh, yeah, I mean... Which song was it? Again. The first big clash I was on was like Ute Man Promotion. Oh, Ute Man Promotion. Yeah, we yeah. crushed them down there. You crushed them? Winners, yeah. Who, who was on Ute Man at the time? Tennessee was there yet? Tennessee at that time had relocated to America. Okay. So the promotion stable wasn't the full strength mm. that it should have been. Um, other sounds, that, a lot of sound, you know, a lot of sound. and um, But you see, with Metro, Metro is not so much a clashing clash sound. It, it just... It will conquer any sound just through good music and good vibes. Mm. And I think that's the reason that, although it was meant to happen, Metro Media and Stereo One never clashed. clashed. Mm. You know, and Metro Media did clash, but it wasn't a clash with Jaro up at Chelsea Jerk Centre. That time I was on Jaro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we soon reached on to the Jaro part of the yeah. journey. So, on Metro, you know, yes, you were involved in, in quite a few clashes, yeah. toss-up and stuff. Which sound back then gave you guys the, the toughest fight? Uh, which DJ? Which DJ? Some... I'll be honest with you, and I have no animosity. He's a friend of mine, Richard Bennett, is a bridging. It was Charlie Chaplin. Chaplin? Yeah. As I said, Charlie Chaplin. Hold on, man. There was a... There was a... Sting. Uh, Hot shots, man. Yeah, well, that happened because of the week before at Fort Clarence. Him imply that him catch me and Peter Metro, you know, <laughs> like some fish thing. Yeah, yeah. So I had to yeah, you wasn't having that. No. <laughs> 
So you've got to defend the thing? I've got to defend it. But you say some things there, the some upset people of, never pleased about, brother. Some people were not. As a, as a white man, <laughs> They were very unhappy about that. And uh, the irony of that is the week later, me, Metra, Charlie and Josie were, were DJing in Miami. Yeah. Suddenly Metra can't make it. So me, I have to go by myself. <laughs> yeah, alone. I'm like, no, no worry, all the Padronglis there in Miami. <laughs> But you have to understand the colonel and Charlie. Yeah, right, right. Because the colonel did, did, did upset. Yeah, he was upset. But yeah. the colonel's my friend. Yeah, right. You know, I see him every day. And we've discussed that. You know, them way there. And maybe and I did overstep the mark a But I'm music to sit down like I'm not personal. Never. Right. But the time it becomes personal is what happened between Carter and Ninja Man. Oh, with the, with the and physical I'm, thing. Yeah, then. that's mm. a no-no. Right. You know? So. So you want, you want. <laughs> <laughs> you want Chaplin, the on the plane and go. Going to Miami. After Uno Abdal pass yeah. up there. So I'm suddenly on the flight, I'm next to, next to Charlie. You sit on beside Charlie for the Lord God. <laughs> and him just start laughing, so Dominic. I'm a granny groom, you know. Yeah. I love the tracing thing. <laughs> and he turned around and told me that he was very upset to hear that a couple of his police friends <laughs> wanted to reprimand Dominic, so to speak. Okay. And uh, he was a bit upset about that. And he was also upset that Stitchy had the lyrics about Natty Dread and uh, some Rasta man. Right, right. Yeah, Rasta man them never pleased about that. But Charlie said, no, you know, you know, you can't do that. And he wasn't particularly pleased about that. Mm. But him write the ballad lyrics. Right. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, after that is me, Charlie and Josie DJing in Miami with Zuzu. Uh. And tear down the place. And it just sort of made me realise that at the end of the day, we have a fraternity in Jamaica as artists. And for instance, Terra Fabulous, love that you, bless him. One of the greats. He's got mental health problems, mm -hmm. right? That's no secret. Jamaica as a society, despite how it is perceived by right, overseas, right. they are compassionate, kind people. We look out for Terra. If he's having a bad day, he don't take his meds. No man in our studio, you saw a sound wave, I'm going to make anything happen to Right. Jamaica is like that, you know? And that's the Jamaica that has to be maintained. Agreed. You, you know? Agreed. Seriously. I can go anywhere. Anywhere. I mean, I have no problem. Anywhere? Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are some places I wouldn't go. You know, really want to go down there because them man are with them man there. Mm. Might feel say I say with them man or whatever and all of that. But generally, you know, people have even said to me, I walk the whole corporate area. I walk from Matches Lane, go to Tivoli. I don't do going to the scheme anymore, more than mm. so. But we go through West, you know, go through Rima, Jungle, you know, go up at Argostown, you know, go and link all of it, all of my friends, them, you know. So, and, uh, it draws back to that same great injustice that was done to Jamaica, where they were manipulated into an ideological warfare mm -hmm. that is cut so deep that I can come here and because I'm not actually part of that, I have a safer passage. I shouldn't even smile than enough people. It's true. actually tragic, man. Very tragic. Man. And I think Jamaican people are wonderful. My biggest problem with Jamaica is they need to stop killing one another. You know, I'm going to tell everyone, stop the idiot thing. Yeah? Stop the idiot thing. I mean, I can't name. Not for my friend, me come visit in a prison for me come back, yes, sir. Yeah? Not for me brethren. Joke. Joke thing, man. <sighs> Eventually, you moved on from Metro. Moved on to Metro, went to Jammies. Move on from Metro? Yeah. And so Jammies was the next stop. Yeah. Where you leave Metro? Uh, basically, I had a bit of a falling out, not with Peter, but with the owner of the sound. Jimmy? Yeah. He, it's since been resolved, but he, was a, he can be sort of unreliable, <laughs> as okay. Peter will probably lay a testament to. But, no, I mean, I just wanted to, I was DJing on jammies. I was invited or brought onto the tour, the England tour and the Canada and the Miami tour. We went to England and... I wasn't as well received as I would have liked to be. <laughs> yeah. And it caused a little tension. I come back to Jamaica. It was an awakening that I needed. And then that's when I started to really go into the lyrics. I'd done the Troon Drugs Man, done Marga Skellington for Winston Riley, went back to New York and just started working very hard. 
hooked up at this point with Kerry Swan and started doing shows with him. The first big show was the Apollo in Harlem on Christmas Day with him and Raw Bass and Easy Rock. We've done It Takes Two to Make a Thing mm -hmm, Go Right. Mm -hmm. And we tear that show proper. Come off of that, it's probably one of the biggest shows <coughs> of my career next to Sunsplash. I then done the Palladium with Sinead O'Connor. Mutter Baruka was on the bill, Africa Bambata, a, a rock group called Soul Asylum that are popular. And uh, we started to build up a name. But the problem was there was a lack of material coming out of Jamaica. Mm. You know, I'd recorded tracks for jammies, but these were not being released. So I started to take control doing tracks on my own. In 89, I hooked up with some friends from Labrick Grove, West London, uh, Andrew, Drew, Nichols and Flex, and we made a tune called Any Rhythm. Any Rhythm. Mm. And that was a big success in England. And I released it in Jamaica on a seven inch. It was probably the first hip hop pre-release in Jamaica. And although it didn't sell a lot of copies, it is well respected as a yes. groundbreaking troupe fusing hip hop and dance or um, after that, I was living between Jamaica and New York and doing a lot of shows oh, okay. and coming back to Jamaica, recording to get material released. Nothing was really happening at that point. And so I returned back to England. Which in year was that? 1990. 1990. I returned back to England. Yes. But in 1990, you see, it all was around the summer of 1990 where I arrived in New York after a difficult time in Jamaica where, I'll be honest, I wasn't really making much money. Um, didn't have any records out and I thought, yeah, you need to go to New York. I hooked up with Keras one I started to get little bits and pieces here and there. Go over Brooklyn, do a dub for Addies, you know. And then I was booked for the New Music Cinema and at the New Music Cinema, I met some people who I met previously in England called Digital Underground. They're a hip hop group mm -hmm. from Oakland. And along with Digital Underground, uh, Tipper Lee and rapper Robert and Daddy Freddie were performing. And Eka Mouse was there, because me, Eka Mouse and Keris Swan done a show as part of the New Music Seminar oh, together. Okay. And then we went to do our show and we went on to watch Digital's show. And we meet this youth with Digital it's like a yard, full of life, full of energy. Real you. Yeah. You know? And uh, it's ironic, but that you was actually Tupac Shakur. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And we hung out together and we built up a good friendship. And um, he was very much into the Jamaican music. Yeah, he I was. He was. He had a Jamaican lady from the Bronx. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're in this hotel, in the Marriott Hotel in down in Midtown Manhattan and we're a naughty by nature trek and we're sparring the whole weekend so I'm taking them over to Brooklyn I'm doing my dub plates and that then they're showing me around their little parts and all that walking into stores and you realize the racial context of things when uh, you and Tupac okay, and, and, right, right, and right. Trek walk into a store yeah, 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 and the Korean the, 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 the shut lock off so right. yeah the, the Korean people then start watch Tupac mm. and then start watch the next one. But they're not paying me in the mind. So Tupac get vexed and start pick up buckling and say, yo, I'm going to start smashing bottles, man. What's up? Uh, his mother was a black panther. He ain't into no bullshit. And he turned around and I said, Pac, man, you got to calm, you know, take it easy. So then I go over there and sort of say, listen, you can't just follow people around the store like if Pia said, I'm going to mm. teeth, you know. And the Korean woman looked at me and said, yeah, Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so when Tupac blew up and became the gangster rapper and he was accused of all various crimes, I honestly, hand on heart, believe he's not that guy, mm. you know, and it was a tragic loss of life. You know, I kept in contact with him after the seminar. He sent me his first record that he had out when he did the LP, um, a tune called Trapped. Trap, yeah. And on all mm, of that. Right, and right. Uh, the other person I'm still in contact with was a guy called Shock G mm -hmm. and Money B, who are part of Digital. And uh, when he died, because of what happened with all the big hype and everything, right. and Shook Knight and all that, they went to the beach 
and they make a little fire, get some drums, beat some drum, cook some chicken, play some music. And Shock was like, that was Tupac's funeral, mm. you know, because, you know, the media can right, swamp right, an right, event right, and it becomes right. like a circus, you know. So, yeah, I mean, music is wonderful in that experience that I've met some great artists like you Tupac. You did a real deep father, that yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to me, I'm the greatest rapper that ever lived still. Oh, uh, yeah, Easily. Tupac. You understand? So, I just, I tell you who is very good, though. You've got to give him props. Who, Biggie? Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar, okay. We don't really listen to Kendrick a lot still, but... And Nipsey. Nipsey. And Nipsey. Also. also. Yeah, mm. yeah. So. I, I really... Tupac, Eminem, for my circle, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Tupac, yeah. Eminem, that's my circle. Yeah. So now, you eventually... But, but even before that, so after... Metro, it was Jammies. Who were some of the people around Jammies at the time? Oh, it was Admiral Bailey, Major Worries, Little Twitch, Pamper D. Sh Tolati, Naya from Fire, Tups, Rista Benji. Uh, Chaka Demas was there at the time? No, really. Um, who was the next one there? Colin Roach, Colin Roach Anthony Malva, mm. Chuck Turner come on the Canada Chuck tour Turner. still. Um, lecturer. Big Ed Lecturer. Yeah, man. Uh, Robert Lee, who's here now. Um, Eccleton Jarrett, he lives in England now. A whole heap of big name that I think. What was it like getting Mike around Jamies with so much? Um, it was like, it was... I wasn't given so much free reign as I was uh, on Metro Media. Metro Media. Yeah, mm. but Admiral and particularly Twitch used to kind of look out for me still. And the Major. Major I mean, Warriors. he was the best. Really. That's what I've heard. He was the best. I have heard that many times. He's... He, Amazing talent. I have heard that many times. Yeah. So I'm yeah. one of the best to, to, to do the thing. So after Jammies now, that is when you went back to the UK, or where, where was the Jara part of the thing in this? The Jara part came in around about 1988 when I sort of relocated to New York. Oh, okay. And I was residing with Supercat at his apartment in Left Rock City, Queens, which is another story because it's the home base of rappers like Noriega, Noriega. and a whole load of people who, they love the whole Jamaica yeah, thing yeah, as well, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, he's another person I, I met in my travels mm. still. Um, but around that period of time, it was Jara. Jara was the first big sound I ever DJed on. Ja on the time in 84, when I was DJing on Soul Imperial, I get a one chat up for Jara. Of Jara? Yeah. Because you did a par with, 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 with Dan Dad and, and, and the Doctor? Yeah, yeah. Mad? Yeah. Yeah? And <laughs> Philip Fano and Jim Brown and, you know, Gravel Dread, a whole, whole lot of us, you know? Yeah. 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 Nice, man. So you had interviewed Catan and, and Early B? Of course. Mm. Yeah. You know? I still do my interviews. I interviewed Dillinger last week. Dillinger? Yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Dillinger, there, Jamaica? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Me never know that. Me been a search Dillinger. Yeah. Yeah, what? <laughs> I mean, if a link for the interview. Don't say a word, man. You're going to do that. You're going to do that. You see how it's all connected, yeah? Yeah, man. So, 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 Romantic High Power, Soul Imperial, Metro, Metro Jammies, Jaro, um, Race Symbolic, Bionic, Slash? Bionic, yeah, that was in Jungle because we had Wally Bionic, who was the owner of the sound, and that was the area sound. So while I was actually making my name in between the Metro dances, oh. Wally Bionic would be playing at Charlie Smith School or down in Pensa Street or wherever. And they had a good stable, and then it became Survival Fate. And that was where mm. most of the artists from Bionic went to. Yes. You know them way there? We got involved in Bionic because it was the area sound mm -hmm. in Arnott Garden and we did a lot of dances to build up our name locally for yes. Bionic. So Bionic, you know, it was a good song. Mm. In between that, at the same time, was a sound in Spanish town called Creation. You, so you, you spent time around Creation? Yeah. I in, never know that. In 86, in yeah. 86. How do you think we know this year one, yeah? <laughs> Famous? Yeah. Yeah, got Creation of Thieves sound, man. Right, so... When I come back to Jamaica in 86, after DJing with Jaro and all of that, and get my one piece of the mic and Imperial, <laughs> and I come back, do my little section apprenticeship, yeah. come back, I'm looking for a sound to DJ on. So I'm with Peter Metro in Jungle and all of that. But my DJ hero at the time 
was Papa Sun. Papa Sun. So well, the DJ was Sun. And I went over to Sun, Creation Sound, yeah? And, you know, they were the first ones to actually give me a wage packet. You know? Creation was, Mama G was the first person to pay you. Yeah, yeah. I got paid in Metro, with, with Metro, Metro right. But before that, obviously, if you come and you just DJ one lyric, you're not getting no money. Really pass say, pass yeah, I'm not getting money. I'm not here. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. because we would, Sam was getting a lot of bookings and they come to book Sam, I was part get of him, please. Yeah. Nice, and, man. And he showed me certain things and there was a, it was a good energy. You had yeah. Ricky Trooper was there. Ricky as well. Trooper was there at yeah, the time. Know? Yeah. And, uh, Flatty Ranks Flatty and Rank. Malibu and you Lecture know, was there at the time as well. Yes, mm. you know, so it was all that kind of stable and they, it was called Creation Rock Tower. Creation Rock Tower? Yeah, with Horace Ferguson. I teach, I teach some things that are there and, uh, The first time you see Creation is when they smash Black Star song. Black Star. In the coffee shop in Willardine. <laughs> yeah. And Charlie Chaplin come in and start rap like a Yankee and the place popped down. And then Papa Sam come in and like, Kill him. I was like, what? <laughs> it was, he just killed the place. Uh, in my DJ, so bad, the soldier them, or the police, have come up to the amps and say, yo, for telling for like, you know, go easy, like, because people are going too crazy. Yeah. You know uh, them weird, eh? That's how. I never know you were around creation, down yeah, it, man. Yeah, yeah, I learned, yeah. I learned the thing, man. Yeah, yeah. So you have been around many big songs and everything. Yeah. And you see, that is it, because many people have done money because of some Metro Media DJ. Well, Metro Media is my sound, fundamentally, mm. because that's where I really learned. That's where I became a professional right. on Metro Media. So all credit due to Metro Media yes. and Peter for yeah. that. I know you so. we spoke about a few of the clashes already. You, you made mention of the one with uh, Ch Charlie Chaplin. You are Ninja Man. When did, that it? Not really a clash. Oh, actually, it wasn't a but clash. He was like, it was a situation in Arnott Garden. There was an area war going on. And he was like, one well, this one and this one for come shake and. Oh, like a peace concert. And I had to say, yo, no, that, that, that. that no nah work right now. You know, <laughs> and so obviously there was a little bit of a misunderstanding. But Ninja's my brother. Trust me, you know what I mean? A legendary like Gargan man. Yeah, man, a, a good person. A legendary Gargan yeah, Very man. similar to Tupac. He has this persona or this image of being a tough guy who's outspoken, who's aggressive and violent, non-compromising. But actually, when you get to know the person, very kind, very compassionate. There's a lot of old people in Marl Road who used to pay their rent, mm -hmm. you know? So. There's two sides to everything. everybody. Everybody, you know what I mean, so. <laughs> everybody. You and Bailey clashed a few times, so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> was there a DJ back then with Dominic Fear? Uh, not really. Not, not really. Dominic really. no Fear, not DJ. Not really. Not really. Not really. Yeah. Is there anybody we never clashed with back then where you wish you get the opportunity for to go to to tour with? No, I've got some people I want to go toe to toe with. You still have? Yeah. Like who? I mean, I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, oh, yeah, the, the stereo one, Metro Media thing never go hard. No. But, but you're you never go at it now at all? No. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. Who are your DJ though? My favourite DJ? Yeah, man. The Brigadier, General. General? The Jerry. Jalov? Yes. He's a person I see DJ and say, I want to do that. I never get into this to be a star and be a big DJ and make record and make money. We just want to do what Brigadier do. DJ upon song. Yeah? From early till the next day. From early to the next day. And don't repeat your lyrics. Mad. That's the standard. Brigadier yeah. Jerry. Yeah. So is it safe to say then that Jalov is your favourite song? No? <sighs> You see, Jalov is more of an institution than a sound system. It's more of an institution with the whole than a sound system. Thing. Yes. And it's gone through many changes. People say that Alawi and Briggy don't get along anymore. Alawi. Which, which is quite tragic because of Alawi is a very good. One of the greatest man. He's a Alawi, good Danny Dredd, and yeah. in other, in other, well, Inspector, Zorn, the Inspector, Inspector Willie. Mm -hmm. You know, so. True yeah, that, true yeah, that, true yeah. that, true that. So, yeah, Jalov, I'd say, is probably one of my favorite yeah. sounds. One of the things where, where, where probably is lost on people do with Dominic is whilst we know Dominic as a DJ and he also do some journalism, Dominic is a musical historian. Okay. That is what me get from you. Yeah. Yeah, because you seem to know some things where 
not many people readily know about the thing. Like, I've studied the thing. We have a new lyric called Circle Downtown. So, and we map the whole of downtown Kingston. Mm -hmm. Map out the whole of downtown Circle Kingston. Downtown. Circle Rude Boy Downtown. But Minawana Gun is a lyrical thing. Right. Run it, run it through, no man. And we talk the lyric <laughs> all through the... Uh, about, you know, you know, matches lane at the eight acre, you have Manhattan and you have Roper. Just where they Roper get bulldozer. Out of Beeston Street, that a Dallas Ninja. Down a Luke Lane, you find the Zebra. Out of Love Lane, that a John Mancana. So we map out the whole of downtown and then I go to talk about down a parade at the Ward Theatre, mm -hmm. Coronation Market, Feed Jamaica, Charlie Mattress, the best baby father, him have the most children in our Jamaica. And we talk <laughs> about all of it. Yeah. And I know that I'm going to get some critics to say that I'm glorifying political violence, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm paying homage to the working class people of the heartland and the heartbeat of Jamaica, which is the corporate area, yeah. so that they are not left out like what has happened to Notting Hill and Brixton when downtown Kingston becomes gentrified because it is going to happen. Mark mm. my words. You know? My favorite Dominic song, a white veteran though. Watch it now. We got all my friends from the corporate area. Tivoli Garden, Arnett Garden, Rima, Jungle, Matches Lane. So I might make that. Straight up. Circle, rude boy downtown, send me not hard, me got the steal a showdown. Circle, gangster downtown, send me not hard, me come, but steal a showdown. Miss a ooze in wa, you know them style. Say you know mattress lane, that a eight acre. Say you have Manhattan and you have Europa. Miss a down by the bottom when you find a spangler. Miss a out of dollar street, we the top. Okay, I've started, so I'll finish. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess something there, you know. You know that. Long time. Miss it out of Loot Lane, where you find the zebra. Miss it out of John Lane, Bartland Corner. Me not go on Mark Lane, car that a labor. Miss it out of Beast and Miss a Dallas Ninja. Now we make a little trip and we're gonna Tivoli. Have Jim 1, Jim 2 and Jim 3. Yeah, have Jim Octopus, Jim Ryan as a rest. What well, all that we're gonna say, free up the bus. Now circle, Rude Boy downtown. Send me not have the black bus in the toe down. I go circle, Rude Boy downtown. You like white yeah, man, I buy true that one. <laughs> Give me a couple of bars out of that one. Can you DJ for me today? White better run, we are the white better run, run. White better run, me are the white better run. We'll big up the youth where they call Jen come on. When I left snow, yes, the Canadian, but all of them the DJ. Me are the first one, me are the first white man. Pick up my jam one, pick up the mic and ram a session. Just like a soldier in a battalion. Used to DJ Papa Jammies for the firehouse gang. Used to DJ Romantic over Painland. Well, my first producer, well, him named George Pang. If you're happy and you love it, just hold up your hand. DJ Saxon. Also, Coxon, which part them come from? Miss it in England. The great downbeat up in Uncle Sam, where easy Dominic come for tell everyone, yeah? White veteran. White veteran, we are the white veteran, man. We are the only man that come after me. I make a bag of money, but we are the blueprint. Now, white veteran, me are the white veteran, man. White veteran, me are the white veteran, come on. White veteran, me are the white veteran, man. White veteran, me are the white veteran. But we got a new way of project, come on. Now they found snow, they for number one. But all of them, they DJ and Dominic Sun. Can be given a bite and the inspiration. The first white man to come and jam one. They got the mic and the drummer sing on. Just like us all during the battalion. I think the, the Dominic biggest tune is I'm glad Boy was, George. I'm glad she, Boy George is my biggest tune. It's been licensed to many, many different companies in many different countries. Um, and we're in the process of trying to sort all of that out. Yeah, we sort that about apart. Yeah. Right? There are a couple of bars out of Boy George, man. Who say Dominic, who say Dominic, favour boy judge. Look how we neat, look how we slick, we a wine pump man, man, me a kiss. I can't talk the rest of it because I don't want to get <laughs> censored, you know? Bad thing, man. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah, yeah. You, Dominic, as I said, as I was saying earlier, 
you know a lot of the music. You you would have studied the music, and you know we learning it. We can see where we can learn a lot from. Can I actually send you right now from my phone some clips of me DJing that sound better than what I've done there? Is that okay? Nah, man, you're good, that's a man. You know what I need to worry about fussy. it. Everything good, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And you would have been around many great musicians locally. Yeah. Internationally. And, and overseas. Okay. Yeah. You also, can you say you do a lot of stuff that hasn't been released? You did some work at Pentos. Yeah. What going on with that something? There? Well, I do Cockney and Yardie, and then in the early 90s, I recorded two tunes for Penthouse, one of which was a collaboration with Peter Metro. Oh, lady? Fight the Ghetto. Fight the Ghetto, oh, and okay. It never got released to this day, so, mm. you know. But you can't hold on to the past, you know, you have to yeah. re-record your tune and do them yourself and just do what I do still. Everything happened for a reason, you know? Yes. You have a song with Baby Wayne? Yeah, I've done a tune with Baby Wayne, yeah. yeah. Which song that? Mine? Mine, the way how you dress. Mm. Because the man them were wearing the woman hairstyles, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that nearly get me in trouble with certain figureheads. Oh, oh yeah? yeah? But he didn't have a problem with that, it was some of the... People around him still, yeah. but nothing that minor. I, I have heard Major Mackerel on more than one occasion make reference to the fact that Dominic is the first <laughs> white man DJ who get beaten for dance or beat people for dance hall. What is what, what is is there something around that? Like Hey, you think I look a beat me and get for dance hall? You think I look a bit of box dung and kick dung in get? You think I look a bit of people in box dung and kick down and thump down for that? Me and him, the American Yankee, are run with dung. Uh, I think it's more of a metaphorical oh, thing okay. in the sense that he's not actually talking about maybe being phys physical, physically okay. beaten up, mm. uh, but more in the case of that we've went through a lot of struggles. We mm. went to DJ places. Like, yeah, we've gone to DJ and promote a back gum pun we and things like that. Oh, yeah? Like, oh, yeah. It's cr you know, we're in a hotel and the promoter and I paid a bill. And me, Louis Rankin, and Sloggy, and we're there, there. And next thing, state troopers turn up, you know, South Florida, rednecks, like, yeah, what's going on? Dominic, go talk to the white man, then, man. You know what I mean? It's like, so that's what Mackerel means when he says, yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Because yes. we've been through a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. Through that. As you said, Louis Rankin, you have a song also with Dicky Rankin, Snagapus, Hooked on Crack. Hooked I would on. rather forget about yeah. that. That was a song that was, <laughs> should have been really. Uh, Re recorded. Re okay, but, but, but the song was done. The song was Snag done. Snagapus, so yeah. Dominic. Yeah. Well, Nicky Rankin, Dominic. Yeah. Yeah. The history of the history of Dominic. You know, SNC, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you can't. Yeah, yeah change. Anyway. It. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the, the narrative has been for a long time that Dominic are the first white man DJ. <laughs> what Dominic is, is probably the first white man DJ will make it big. Well, it depends how. I'm, I've got to take this and put it all into Ooh. absolute context Please. with everything. Yes. Yeah is the very first white DJ, Caucasian. Ca Ca Caucasian, was a gentleman called Judge Dredd, yeah, who had tunes out on the Trojan Records label. And he was like very much a slackness DJ, and he was very popular, and he made his name. Mm -hmm. Then, in the arrival of the dancehall era, on a sound called Jam Down Rockers, Snowman. was a young man called Snowman, who used to DJ similar style to Eka Mouse. Mm -hmm. Then, he didn't really make it outside of the dance halls yes. of the UK. And, you know, I saw the opportunity to come to Jamaica and establish myself in the Jamaica market. There was a recent interview on Vlad TV with Snow, where mm. he's saying he's the first white DJ to make it big in reggae music. So at first I was like, hold up, I never do nothing. But you have to remember, <laughs> Everything is in context. Right, right. So absolute respect for Darren O'Brien because he did something that none of us had done before. Right. He took a dancehall tune to number one on the Billboard chart. But with all respects to that, at the same time, the work, as Mackle says, we take not beaten for dancehall, you know what I mean? To actually, you know, go through the, the hard graph, yes. you know? Uh, but we had the best fun. Yeah, yeah, the best I mean, one. Yeah. There was also another white artist, Johnny Nice. Johnny Nice. Johnny Nice. Johnny Nice was before or after you. Was so Johnny came, Nice was between you and Snow. Yeah, well Johnny Nice came into the fold because he was in a place called Hartford, Connecticut, and he brought me, Admiral Bailey and Supercat to Connecticut to perform on a uh, show. Oh, okay. And he and 
came to Jamaica and he was around Jamie's sound. Oh, and he wanted. Oh, uh, yes. you know, do a tune on Pinchers too. He did yes. a tune with Pinchers and he did a that tune. Makes sense. Uh, I think with Jennifer Lara. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure what. We know the song with him on Pinchers. But he done. You know, he he built up his name and at the time, obviously him being Caucasian like myself, they uh, the audience were interested mm. in maybe a clash happening. Oh. You know, yeah. and that's why I wrote the lyric White Veteran to make them know. Oh, yeah, the White Veteran. Ah, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, but I don't know what's happened to Johnny Nice. Mm. Um, I haven't heard from him. The other DJ uh, that should be noted is Willie Oneblood. Willie Oneblood. He came and done Sting, and a good friend of mine, he appeared on a lot of the shows I did, like the hip hop kind of parties. Mm. We did like the wild pitch parties down in the East Village with Just Ice and rappers like that, you know, and King's Son. A um, lot of the block parties we've done, 167 and Clay, up at the Steve Biko Festival in the South Bronx so, with mm. MC Light and that. That was probably one of my most memorable shows. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because it was like walking into the set of, what's the film? The Warriors. The Warriors. Yeah, you walk in. No white people, no black people, no pure Spanish people, pure Puerto Rican. I said, Dominic, man, them people were caught up fast. You know what I do, you know? <laughs> so, because yeah. I walk through and I do my thing, I saw people shooting up heroin on the sidewalk. So when I reached where the park, where the party was kept, and I see KRS one and some of his people. Some people, yeah, no. Thank God, yeah, <laughs> safety. But yeah. we tore the place apart. And it was taking it back to the original essence of what hip hop was, which was just two turntables and a mic in a block party on the street. The same as the dance or team. Yes. You know? Yes, yes, yes. It's not some big, you know, highly sponsored video or an elaborate PR campaign. It's 82 Chisholm Avenue, mm. you know? It's Ashanti Junction, you know? Skateland Roller Disco. Skateland. None of them place no there again, you know? True. You know? True. Now, you can't live in the past and say stuck in the past, but certain things have to be preserved. True, I agree with it totally, you know? sir. And I think part of the reason of the crime in Jamaica could be because of the lack of that. That creates opportunities for people to get some money. People who don't have nothing, they can go and buy some red stripe and some Guinness and set up a little stool like you and me a sit pan and just sell them thing outside the dance. And they say that can give them picnic lunch money I'm earning. True, true. When you take away that, what have you got? And it's not just Jamaica, it's, lim it's going on global, everywhere. I appreciate the clarification about, you know, the first white man DJ business. I know a lot has been said, we're not correct down the years. Yeah. Right, so, Judge Red, um, Snowman, Dominic, Johnny Nice, Snow. Willie One Gentleman Blood. Gentleman and Willie One Blood. And I've got to mention Bookie. Bookie, Bo uh, Bookie Rang. Yeah. Mr. Bookie, uh, the um, original dance hall Thursday. Yeah. Well, on out of here, Dominic. This one dedicated to all the beautiful, sexy Jamaican girls. I know that you would love to have a white man as your boyfriend. I'm not talking about the tourist white man, I'm talking about the Tom's white man. Let me tell you. We cannot get no ideas when the wicked the slam. Them a pick up the youth from India the island. They not the strength and the something so long. And I get a slam from the white man. Why? White man have a bad reputation. Some of them bow and turn back. But one thing me tell me. Bookie's my brethren. Like, uh, I mean, me and Bookie kind of come from the same community. So yeah, and... bring him in at the thing. He brings himself. Oh, he doesn't he need himself. Dominic to bring oh, okay. him. He's a larger than life character. He gets along with everyone. Oh. You know, him and Gansey are close friends. So, you know. As in Terry Gansey? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, he's been doing his thing and, you know, he's. The thing is, he hasn't really had a, 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 a hit it's tune song, right. yet. So, you know, but he's earned his bones, so to speak, in other means. You know what I mean? Mm. So he hasn't really had a hit song. And then, who else have we got? He's always contacting me, and I contact him on Instagram. He's crazy. Who's that? Togawa. Togawa. Yeah. I've heard a few things about him, but not, not, yeah, son? Yeah, yeah, mm. me know what I say. Yeah, so, I mean, he's got some good lyrics, and, uh, 
The other DJ, obviously, is Skinny Man. Skinny he's Man. Very, very good. Skinny Man, man is, is DJing or is rapping? Which one? He's rapping, but he, he, he can do the, the Jamaica okay, style. Cool, cool, you know cool, what I mean? Cool. And he's got good lyrics. Yes. You know? So, outside of the music now, Dominic, because you went back to England, or even before that, 1987, you did Sunsplash. Yeah. I think I did it again, 1988, and then the last one was 95. No? Yeah, it was yeah. 95. The last one was it 95. Was, yeah, yeah. Mm. And we'd done Beach Party Night, I think it was 92. 92. Yeah, that was Beach Party Night. And mm. uh, I was a bit disappointed about being on the Beach Party Night, but we done quite well yes. up there. How uh, many times you did Sting? I can't remember. Many times? Yeah. Yeah. Marty, <laughs> which are your favorite stage show experience in Jamaica? Not in the rubber dub settings, stage show, like a sun splash, a sting, a whisking sun jamboree, a one on yeah, champions that was in good. action. The, when I returned after the long hiatus to do whisking sun jamboree, jamboree, that was Which good. year was that? 2008. 2008. Oh, and yes. Then we, uh, and we also. I'd say yeah, I was the stings there. then, some of the sting them really. Some of the sting them. Yeah. Mm. Um, some of the shows at Fort Clarence as well, they were good, you know. Um, them time everything at Fort Clarence, a big sitting one. Yeah, it's, that was our place, man. You know, they've just started posting up a lot of this stuff online, mm. and uh, which is good because a lot of people just thought it was Boy George and I ate that. And I was like, no, we have lyrics, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, I've you know? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, Jamie Rodigan, David Rodigan's yeah, son, he's like, yeah, you, you want to read all the comments and all of this, that and the other. So the thing's change now, you know what I mean? And my son helps me and shows me how to do certain yes. things. But the realisation as well is, in all, all honesty, you know, me, myself, Josie, well, we are veterans in this and we've been doing this for years. Now, me from the position I'm in, with my media background right. and the art and that, is to collaborate all three of these and then put back in something to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. to re I mean, the art situation in Jamaica is deplorable because yes. mo most people seem to think that like the world of fine art is limited to, you know, people like David Hockney, Tracy Emin, Damien Hurst, you know, Lucian Freud. Where are the Jamaican artists? They're now talking about Kappa. And now I talk about ass. Gangster for Life or some of these new street artists that are coming up in Jamaica or down at Fleet Street near Raytown, near GP, mm. where they've got all these amazing murals, murals yeah. you know? And everyone I talk about Banksy. Well, I'm to Jamaica, you know? So I have to kind of do something to... To help bridge you know? that gap. I mean, Tom Tavares Finson, you know, Cartel's attorney, I believe, is well, the... formally. Formally, yeah, is actually the... Um, He's the chairman of the National Gallery of Jamaica. Oh, I didn't know that. And so I feel optimistic that there is going to be more of a change. It's going to be less homogenized, so mm. to speak, and, you know, show the more African content. And not just that, yes. but the whole Jamaica content of what's going on, because some of the people that come here to do dub plate, them, yeah, man, me do me art, me do me canvas, you know, look. And I'm like, that is brilliant. You know them way there? And if you do your art and your drawing, it's not about making money. It's nothing about that. It's about no matter what problem you have in a life, when you pick up your paper and you draw your picture, Free. you forget about it. But there could be a nuclear war going on outside. You know, response. Mm. You just do your thing and you can't beat that. Yes. You can't beat that. Then the money part, soil up the thing because big, yeah, I mean, mo big money in, in the heart. Yeah, yeah, true that, true that. You know what I mean? Well, outside of Jamaica still, because when I think of a pay for these things, I know I think of. Concrete Jungle. Okay. What was the motivation behind that? What, the book? Yes. It, uh, has it been really published? Not yet, no. Eh. It's, it's good to go, man. It's, all it's like, good to go. Yeah, and I've been sitting around. It was written before Diary of Seven Killings as well, you know. Oh, yeah? Now, I'm not discrediting uh, Marlon. But yeah, Greg, man, I but, understand that. But it's like, boy, it's like him getting their fuss. You know what I mean? There, so, yeah, this, has been, this is something that's been on the shelf for over a decade and I read comments like, what's going on? People are anticipating it. So one way or another, one format, whether it's online or actually just to come down here and just print a whole heap of book and just line up a seat. So you're, you're, you're doing the publication yourself or you're I looking at publicists? I've been looking for a publicist, so I have to do it myself. Oh. 
and it, it covers what? Your experience well, in Arnett is, Garden Art was, is a musical vibration type of thing. It's two books in one. The first book is called Arnett Garden. So it's called Concrete Jungle. The first part is basically describing the background to where I went to live. Mm. And this is the reason it's taken so long because I've been at odds and a little bit of a moral dilemma about writing about certain issues and certain things yeah, that happened in the computer in community. Yeah. You know, I spoke to Tony Welsh about this before he passed away when I was doing this, and George, and they both agreed that it was a very good idea, but they said it's got to be your story, Dominic. Mm, right. So I'm not going to write about this one, kill this one, and that one, do that. But obviously there's a background about General Storkey, about Christopher Henry, Natty Chris, and the background as to what, how it happened, mm. how it developed. You know, the involvement with Cuba, the Chinese riots, Walter Rodney, you know, you know, showing everything that made up this volatile situation in Jamaica, which the main cause of the volatile situation was the ideological battle between the superpowers, as I've stated. Russia and America. Then you, yeah, and then you put all of this in, and you've got people that I honestly believe that Michael Manley and Edward Siaga had a genuine love for Jamaica to make it a better country and to free up the poor people from post-colonial bondage. But what happened? Mm. The bigger heads get involved in there, that. Right, release the book, man. I'd love to read that. I've got to do that, haven't I? I'd love I to read that. I owe it to Jamaica. That. I've got to do that, yeah. I'd True. definitely love to read that. Yeah. Definitely. The magazine is still up and running? Or? Not really at the moment. The magazine folded because we had lack of funding. <laughs> yeah, I have to know? laugh when I said the magazine folded. Yeah, the pun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So it go. Yeah. But we still have the label. We're releasing material yeah. and all of that. You know? And everything is cool. You know? We have tunes that are coming out. Mm. And uh, we've been doing recording down here. Yes. Dominic, you think you get the... The respect that <laughs> you, you deserve, as in one of the men from outside of Jamaica, where come and you know, make a name for himself. Because Dominic is really and truly how you define respect bigger than many people who actually born and grow here in the music, in terms of name. It depends how you define respect, if it's like financial gain or if it's actually through genuine respect from the people in the business. Who, a combination of both? Uh, financially, I don't think really I've been paid my dues. I don't want to go on camera yes. and come across as a bitter, twisted, middle-aged man. No, but man. your story is your story, you know, if, if you haven't been paid, you haven't been paid. Well, you want to know the truth? Apart from one or two, we don't get paid. We, don't get, we paid. get paid for a show, we get paid for certain things like publishing and that, but a lot oh, of Oh, so them, you're getting publishing and royalties? What? Oh, okay. No? Not really. Not really. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so, are things in place? Or are things being put in place to things rectify some place. of them things? Uh? Oh, yeah, I've rectified some matters. I mean, some people, because of my absence mm. and not being around, it's like, okay, we're going to go and sort out this, that, and the other. You never did it. So, we've sorted out that. Other people don't even want me to bring up the subject. Mm -hmm. You know? I have a stage in life where if you can't really talk positive about someone you try yeah, to keep, them, you keep your mouth shut mm. so we'll just leave that as it is you know yes but you don't think overall financially, no financially yeah. then then deal with smarty smarty like, yeah when i talk to people the people are jimmy yeah man you mean the me producers cool. man. if me walk down the road and say yo mr man you hear me right now i'm in the morning you know you want me can't can't give me a cab fare your average jamaican one you know, mm. now nothing. We said, oh, Dominic, you know, yo, yo, you can't drop Dominic up, sir. So we have the love of the people, then. Eh? Mm. But then sometimes I feel, we shouldn't have to stress the people, then. Eh? Well, I'm to the man we're in Ireland publishing and whatever and whatnot. Well, I'm to my own. You know them way there? Mm. And then I think, well, I'm to your own. You're still lucky enough to go back to England, you have your journalism and your art. What about man like... Some man. I could name hundreds right. of artists. I knew Alton Ellis very well. Alton Ellis is a nice person, but he seemed to be embittered by what he went through in the industry, you know? You don't want that to define you, you know what I mean? So that's m part of the reason why I stepped back, got back into the journalist thing, set up Eight Man, 
and do what I do still. You know? Mm. See the pre. You know? So I say Africa. Yeah. You know, but I'm not uh Bitter. No, I say can't do that. Because with all right, John from Dub Vendor said, in Jamaica, Dominic, you've been paid in kind. Mm. You can go anywhere. If I want Luciana to buy a tune for me, he's not even going to ask me for an advance, probably. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go and yeah. check Sizzler after this done, you know? And the man then treat me like them prince, like them, like we're barn and grew together. Now, if I suddenly had like five Grammy albums and a big four wheel drive SUV park outside and whatever, yeah, you know, people would deal with me. Right. Of course. But I wouldn't have that level of respect that me have as an Isla Bash, you know? So I wouldn't change a thing. You and change there, a there, thing. There, there are no regrets. No regrets. None at all. You have answered quite yeah. a few questions in what there, so. Yeah. Yeah. How many children? You asked me already, I want you to have me in. No, I mean, the answer about that, I asked how many brothers and sisters or oh. siblings I've seen, I mean, as a children. Oh. <laughs> I was here, I want you. Yeah. But in terms of brothers and sisters, how many? Well, me have two sisters, them. Yeah. And then my father have outside picnic them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's three. Yeah. Oh, that, okay. Let me know about We had one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's what I say. Yeah. Mr. Ken, and, and your surname is Kenny, Dominic Kenny. Dominic Kenny right. is an Irish name, son of Michael James Kenny and Rosemary Flood Maguire, which is also an Irish name. Very proud of my Irish heritage. Yes. And there's no secret that most of the white Caucasian DJs, most of them are of an Irish background, uh, mm, you know? Yes. So, and you see the similarities between Jamaica and Ireland. Yes. You know? You have been doing the music for a long time, from uh, 80, 80. 83, 84, there they are both. The first, first time, time I, I come here in 83. Yeah, hold a mic in 83. That 83. was the first time I really did anything the, like that. The yeah. time I'm in a band, you know, Dominic? Eh? Eh? <laughs> and you still love the music. You're like, like, you're still in, you know, sometimes some man of fall course. out of love with the music yeah, because man. of what the music has done to them or not done for them. You still which, love which it. Which part me there? Jamaica. Yeah, where me stay. Yeah, mm. people with me there monks for years. Yeah? Music. Yeah. All right, which part me there right now? Them say me a five. Yeah, five. Yeah, cause me like Skeng, me like Massacre. You know them way there? I feel like Massacre. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> yeah. The wages of sin, and me not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the painting part of the thing now though, yeah. because I've seen some of this stuff. Absolutely fabulous, man. You do, you do, um. But you see the art world, man, it full of too much, let me word this correctly, too much minting, you know, because mm. If you don't, if you're not, I don't know how it is, if you don't click with the right crowd. I mean, with anything, so you know, Dominic, I guess, yeah, if you have a look at that tonight, we don't know if you, if you, if you exist, you look like I do, so we stay as human beings. So, the way, you know. me, the way me see it, if them now say, ah, me come home and me come to Jamaica, you know? Me come home, yeah. come to Jamaica, I yeah. like how that sword, yeah. You know? I draw a wicked picture of the Gargan, I carry a game tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know? Sizzler, said thing, you know? So, okay, it might not be Royal Academy of Art money or Turner Gallery money, but me can eat my food from my people in my Jamaica, you know what I mean? And establish Jamaica in the art world, because right. it deserves that, you know? It's not just white people, yeah? Yes. And I'm not scared to say that, you know what I mean? It's be, who, who's the, the only <laughs> sales pitch of black art black artist, mm. is Jean-Michel Basquit, you know? And Jean-Michel Basquit and his friend Keith Haring used to come and show them in New York. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keith Haring designed the posters for one of the... Uh, the shows that you did? Yeah. Mm. You know? For so, the people out there who want to get in touch with Dominic, for bookings and dub plates, how they, how they find you? Well, they can find me on my Instagram page, Dominic the DJ. They can contact me on my email, DominicKenny64 at gmail.com, yeah? Or, you know what I mean, if you really need to contact me for dub plates, contact O'Neill Famous at Music Town Studios, you know? We're getting more in tune with the modern technology, TikTok, 
top top tick or whatever them call it and all of them sitting <laughs> you know my nephews yeah. my children they laugh at me like you know like they're backward you know but yeah we're building up the things so we're we're, we're very much back in the fold mm. yeah we mentioned uh, baby win when we have a tune with dicky rank you know yes sir uh, you know you have a few songs with peter metro is there anybody where you never collaborate with where you don't mind who i sang with uh, I've also failed to mention I did two tracks with Gappy Ranks. With Gappy Ranks, yeah, oh, okay. Did two tunes for him, and we have a new mix tape CD that's okay. coming out, which is a combination of old material and new, new material. material. Yeah. The Downtown Kingston tune is going to come out, and we're going to have another mix CD, which is also old material mixed up with new, new material. Because I realised on this trip here that people very much want to hear the old right. stuff. Right, definitely, you, definitely. You know, you, you know, so that is that. And yeah. as far as like the art goes, we've traveled as well. We've been to Mexico City, been to Colombia and Bolivia. We've done exhibitions there. In between that, I managed to do some shows outside of the not so ordinary places. I know Peter Metra told you, I was in Cambodia for six right, months right, right, and right. Vietnam. And there's like a little bit of a reggae scene, particularly oh, with the Cambodia French. Oh, Cambodia and Vietnam. Yeah, well, there's a lot of French people out there. It was mm -hmm. a French colony, and the sound in Vietnam is called Saigon Rockers. Saigon Rockers, yeah. And, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. and Tipper, Tipper Irie was working on Saigon Rockers. I was working in Cambodia, done several shows at the Slur Bar and up at a place called Batambang, you know. So we, we basically dealt with that, and that, you know, just kept us in the yeah. flow until we come back to Jamaica and re-establish you know, everything. You know, a question I ask you, though, who you don't love to do a song with, who you never do a song with yet? There's too many people. Too to many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... You don't have to give me an answer if you don't want to give me an answer, man. Um, <coughs> I'd like to do a track with Kodak Black. Kodak Black, yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. But then I think gone. about that and then I think, oh, you'd... But then you should never worry about what people are going to think about right. something. You know, just I, do I like work, his delivery. Just do the work. I like his delivery. Yes. I like Skeng's delivery. As I like well. Skeng's delivery. Yeah, yeah, you know. What are your yeah. favourite rhythm? Of all time? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd say that. I'd so, yeah. Kumi Khan, Studio Kumi Khan. Mm, mad. Yes, it's Anything with Coxon, mate. Anything with Coxon? Yeah. yeah. There was something I was going to mention, if you want me to talk yeah, about Yeah, go, go ahead. I want to give the youth of Jamaica a health warning and tell them what actually yeah, happens man. when you use mollies. All right, I want to reach out to everybody in Jamaica right now. Okay, I don't know me old dog, I don't hide nothing. Yeah? Youth them for cool off of the molly, the ecstasy, the MDMA, because MDMA depletes the serotonin levels. And the serotonin is the chemical imbalance in your brain that will make you happy and you will become depressed and develop mental illness. It also depletes the immune system, which means that a lot of people in my country that died from COVID were probably of the generation that used to party and take ecstasy back in 87 and 88. We don't need that in Jamaica, bless. Father Kenny. Yeah, man. I appreciate the man's contribution to the Thank thing, you. brother. Yeah. You understand, for bringing the thing to some places, yeah, you yeah. understand, and some faces. Yeah, man. Different from what they think that they are ready. Yeah. And for a man who you not know, born here, come here and take the thing and own the thing. Yeah. And take Jamaica and own Jamaica, man. We appreciate the man's contribution down the years. I, you I appreciate Jamaica's contribution. Yeah. Too. And as I said, for me, you're not only a DJ, but you are also a musical historian, man. Thank you. Because you know some things that me I try to learn. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And we know that you're still in love with the thing and yeah. you're still trying to bring through some people too. You, you mentioned Stickman and a Stickman is the same name? Uh, well, the youths I see right now, particularly basses, are youth yeah. called Sahi, mm -hmm. self produced, very focused. And there's another young youth called Paceo, you know. Uh, at the moment it's early days, but you can ask anyone, blacker ranking, ghosts. I mean, the first man, Carl in Pan Stage. You, you're you called ghosts. And blacker ranking. And blacker ranking. Yeah. And blacker. Blacker. Pan, yeah, blacker. Man. <laughs> Pan Stage for the first time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You pay your news about the brother, brother, man. Thank you. 
Big up yourself, man. And you, man. We appreciate this. And Jamaica, you know big up your country, because it's nice, you know. Big up your place. And make nobody tell you nothing. Best place. Mad. If thanks. Teach them! Hey yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them!